So I spoke in a recent video about how Jojo Bao is a dish that sings. That's what I'm talking about. I've talked about uh, Nanjing's historical prominence in my recent videos. The city is esteemed as the Liu Chao Gu Du Shi Chao Du Hui, referring to its status as the capitals of 10 states and dynasties. So many ancient rulers have lived here. And even those that didn't live here visited here often. Uh, one of them is Qianlong Emperor, who visited Jiangnan six times, during five of which he stayed here at Qixia Si of Qixia Mountain. Qixia Mountain is renowned as one of the top leaf paving sites in the country, but this autumn has remained rather warm and I suspect we've come too early even after having already delayed the trip. Much of the leaves have yet to turn red, a slight disappointment, but Qixia Si Qixia Temple is a jewel in any season. It is home to the biggest Serira Tower in China. The original structure was built around 500 or 600 AD, while this one that stands here dates to around 900 AD. Next to it are Buddhist relics even older, Qian Fo Yan, Thousand Buddha Rocks. These grottos were carved around the same time as the Yungang Grottos and Longman Grottos, both World Heritage Sites. The Thousand Buddha Rocks might not be as world famous, but definitely well worth a visit. Maybe there are reasons why the Buddhist Qianlong Emperor came here so many times. I spoke a bit about the Qianlong Emperor earlier. Here's another story. Uh, so the story goes that he was sailing uh, on a boat um, along some river nearby, probably the Yangtze. Uh, he was enjoying uh, the wine, uh, the crab bun, and the nice view. Uh, maybe he was heating up from the wine, so he took off his uh, Long Tao, the imperial dragon robe. Uh, and then a wind came by and swept his uh, robe uh, across the river to the other shore. That place came to be known as Long Pao Zhen. Or literally dragon rope town so that's where we're going we are crossing that same river going to that same town to try that same crab bun we didn't end up going to uh long tao Tan in liu because it's too far away it's gonna be a really long way uh, but we got something else from liu he, the zhu tao now uh liu in the north of nanjing is uh, famous for many different delicacies other than the crab soup bun uh, which is uh, sometimes eaten with garlic, crescent, and soup, a very unique combination. Uh, they also have you know, things like uh, niroku, which is a sort of uh, like beef, terrine, or horse meat. Uh, and then also uh, salted juice, uh, yen sui ho, not the salted duck of Nazi butter, salted juice. I forgot to mention Bo Zhuzi, literally living bee. It's basically identical to the Filipino balut, as in fertilized egg embryo. But I've had that in Shaoxing before. And then also this juice roll, cake's hand. Uh, it looks like there's some like pork roll over here and some ears. Things don't always go as planned. The descent down Qixia Mountain took more time than expected, and there were many other visitors vying for rides. So instead of going north to Long Pao Tang and Liu He district, we decided to head back south to central Nanjing. Although we end up missing a plethora of Liu He delicacies, the Liu He paste head on the menu here partially makes up for that regret. I would have ordered that at the Long Pao Tang restaurant anyway. This and the Jiu Niangbing sweet rice wine cake are rather local and traditional, while the rest are more unconventional and harder to label. Well, unfortunately, we missed the crab soup bun, but we got like truffle soup bun. I hear that Chiang Ye Fan was born as a Da Pai Dan roadside store around two decades ago. So black truffle might seem to veer far from its humble beginnings, but traditional soup buns come in many varieties. For example, the Long Pao crab soup bun is a luxury. Besides, Pork is a standard filling in the Jiangnan region anyway, they just kick it up a notch by adding earthy black truffles. Enough with the fairs of Jiangnan region, let's look at the foods of Lingnan region, specifically Cantonese cuisine, as manifested in this Jojo Bao. First of all, the term is Jojo as seen and correctly written on the menu, not the similar looking Du Du as seen in many reviews. Jojo is a Cantonese word and Jojo Bao or the Jojo Simon pot is chiefly a Cantonese type of cooking involving really hot clay pots. Even though this isn't a Cantonese establishment, Chang Ye Fan is most well known for its Jojo Bao. I can see why. They have the Jojo essence nailed down. I've had my fair share of Jojo Bao in its birthplace of Guangdong. They were delicious but didn't always arrive Jojo in. Chang Ye Fan then solves that last mile problem. <laughs> Come on, 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 come on,
So I spoke in a recent video about how Jojo Bao is a dish that sings. That's what I'm talking about. Music to my ears. Because Jojo is an onomatopoeia for the sizzling sound of this. I love that final 30 seconds of cooking at the table, presenting you the Jojo in all its glory. By the way, Jo can also be used as a verb colloquially, namely to cook in the Jojo style. In theory, you could Jo anything. This Asian swamp eel is very common, but I don't recall seeing duck tongue before. Yet, it makes so much sense, especially here. Not only do duck tongues have high fat content conducive to sizzling, but Nanjing is also known as the duck capital. Brilliant. Just as brilliant is the Chou Chiang Mu Yu Zai. Maybe it could be understood as stir-fried cuttlefish. It's hard to categorize this dish into a specific cuisine. At least it's beyond my ability. The term chou chiang in the name is a mystery. Perhaps chou denotes sheng chou, light soy sauce, which seems to be the basis of the dark broth. While chiang might refer to chiang cha, a stir-frying technique whereby aromatics like garlic and chili pepper are thrown into hot oil to quickly bring out the aromas before adding the main ingredients. Just a guess, a shot in the dark. Whatever its original inspiration may be, the dish is excellent. The whole meal is excellent. What an excellent way to wrap up another excellent day. 再见!